food businesses generally commission chemical analyses for three principal reasons and they all revolve around conformity. So the first reason may be to demonstrate, for example, that a food's nutritional composition um, correlates with what's on the label. A second aspect is, is when there is evidence of non-conformity, for example, taint. So in those cases, a food business may well want to identify what the contaminant, what the tainting compound is, how much is there, and then carry out a risk assessment to decide what to do next. And the third um, area is basically, and it's an increasing one, is to look at the question of unknown knowns. When food is produced, it's a very chemically complex system. So when we process food, there's a lot of chemical reactions taking place. And then once it's packaged, again, it's not inert. There's, there are more chemical reactions going on. And some of those reactions may be cause uh, producing compounds which are of interest. And so food businesses may well then commission analyses to look at those types of compounds. For a number of compounds, the authorities have set limits which differentiate what is acceptable and what is unacceptable. These are often referred to as maximum residue limits or MRLs. However, in the majority of cases, no such information is available and therefore it's necessary to carry out an additional risk assessment. What differentiates Camden BRI from many other laboratories is that we can provide the additional service. So not only can we analyse and test for the presence of a particular compound, but we can also provide information to a food business to, de to assess the risk that it might present to a consumer. Now, in a number of cases, there is evidence within the, within the literature as to the to toxicological status of that compound. And then that is a relatively easy exercise then to determine how much would be considered to be safe or how much would be considered to be of toxicological concern. However, in a large number of chemicals, no such information is available. And then we have to revert to computer modeling to determine what the risk is, is that's presented by that compound. Now, this approach is often referred to as in silico toxicology, and it's based on a concept called quantitative structural activity relationships, or QSAR. And QSAR actually looks at the chemical structure of a compound and compares it with other compounds of similar structures. And from that, it's possible to extrapolate the toxicological significance of the compound. Once we have that information, we can provide it to the business. They can then use that in their risk assessments and they can determine whether they consider the presence of that compound in food to be safe, whether it's the level is safe but they wish to optimise their proce processing to reduce it even further, or if it's at levels which are of concern, then it may be necessary for them to undertake a product withdrawal or recall. Camden BRI has recently reviewed the offerings that we can make in terms of risk assessment and has invested in reviewing what is available in the market in terms of in silico software. And as a result, we've upgraded our resources. This means now that we can give a much more detailed and comprehensive um, approach to the issue for compounds for which there is little or no toxicological data.